Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Christian, aka the Atlantean Alchemist. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my experiences with the goddess Freya. This has been a video I've been wanting to do for a while now. Um, I wasn't able to last time because of the issues I was having with the microphone. I was able to um, kind of come up with a way I can check my mic to make sure it's working before I hit record. So we're good to go and I will be sharing my experiences with Freya with you guys. So um, before I start, if you're new to the channel, I talk a lot about spirit work, magic, and building your own personal practice. If that's something that interests you, um, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications for whenever I post. And um, I will always try as well in the description to leave videos and likeness to the ones that you're watching so that you can find other things that you may enjoy on my channel. Because I know there's some videos that kind of get lost in the mix of it um, that are very valuable and can kind of connect you further with building your practice. Um, but without further ado, let's begin. So Freya and I have a very um, long relationship, one that has started um, across many lifetimes. At least that's what I feel and what I come to know from my experiences with her. So how I kind of came to know Freya was as I was in chemistry class back in um, like 10th grade, I didn't really pay attention. I spent my time reading about Norse mythology because I knew Greco-Roman mythology quite well and I was interested in exploring this route. So I read a lot about the stories. I know there's a hyper focus on um, Odin, Thor, and Loki during those stories. And while I do, I'm devoted to Odin, this one is all on Freya. So um, the stories, I'm, they don't really talk much about the goddesses as much in Norse mythology, or at least what is left of it, because it was a oral tradition. Um, what's written down is kind of like the remnants and like the revamps um, that survived after the Christianization of the world. So Freya and Frigg, to me, in my experiences, were separate at once when reading through the mythology, understanding their energies. Um, I ended up being um, connecting with Freya, Odin, and Frigg. Um, I ended up having the strongest relationship with Frigg. Freya kind of like faded out into the distance. Um, Frigg has always, for me, been about weaving my own fate and my own destiny. As a weaver as she is, um, she is said to weave the fate of all, um, and is the goddess of essentially all the elements and of magic and of the home and hearth. So at this time, I was working with Hestia, um, and she kind of just bumped her out of the way, was like, hey, this is my turn, it's my time to take over. Um, and she was showing up in a lot of ways in my life. At the time, I had a lot of um, trust issues around trusting, you know, the divine to be there for me. And every single time Frigg would come through and she would essentially um, prove me wrong one way or another that I can trust her. Um, in other ways that she's kind of shown herself to me is um, the only thing I can remember prominently was this experience. It was during a total lunar eclipse. So back then I used to go to full moon drumming circles at the beach. Um, and during this day, it was the weirdest experience. I go out to the beach at night and the water is warm for once, like lukewarm. Um, and the sea just seems so calming and like receiving. And I'm doing this ritual with Frigg, um, with my friend at the time. Um, and when we come back from the ritual, after the lunar eclipse kind of was fading out and I turn back to the ocean one last time, there is a big black door that appears um, with like this white light kind of behind it, kind of like um, in a solar eclipse, the images where you see kind of like those those like swirls of rimming light. Um, I just saw that and like a f like the vision physically materialized a door. Um, and as I walk up to it and I'm about to touch it, it disappears. Um, it was one of the most insane visions I've ever had that like I've had physical manifestations of visions only about three times in my whole life. Um, that was the strongest one where, um, it lasted like a couple seconds there. Um, but I just, all I could do was just stand there in awe. Um, 
and it wasn't long after that vision that I ended up um, doing an oath to um, Frigg to become her priest. Um, this oath essentially um, bound me to her in, in a sense like when you do an oath to a spirit, usually a god or a goddess, um, and they agree to the terms, you will feel the energy of being bound by your word. Um, and to this day, I still don't regret it, but it opened up a lot of doors for me in the process. So um, by doing that, I learned a whole new side to Frigg. Eventually, um, I no longer saw Frigg and Freya as um, separate goddesses. I began to see them as the same goddess after that experience. And it was like, it was like, I was kind of getting like a hunch to that direction. And I had asked a friend who knew, um, Freya a lot better than I did. And I had asked her like, Hey, I'm beginning to feel like Frigg and Freya are the same goddess. And she's like, yeah, like she, <laughs> she brought it up. Like it was like almost like common knowledge. And I, <sighs> I was like, you know what? This makes a lot of sense. And then I was like looking back at, you know, how Freya is all about Seder, how, and then my experiences with learning Seder have been all about weaving the threads of fate. And weaving fate has been a thing of Frigg for a long time as well. And through my research, I found um, through um, the older information on Freya, um, when she was no known by the... Um, the, the tectonics, the tecton, <clears throat> the tectonic goddess Freya. Freya was her name when she was just one goddess as Freya and Freya. Now, of course, there's a big debate about this, and there's a lot of people who say they experience her energies different from each other. And I've done many experiments on this, um, honestly, as much as I could. What was interesting to me is that all the alternative names of Freya, like Golvig, Mardal, all those energies felt closer to Frigg's than the name Freya itself felt close to Frigg. That was the interesting part. And no matter if I tried to invoke them and have them both in the same space, one would always come through for the both of them, uh, essentially. So that was has been my experience. I know not everyone experiences the same thing, but that has been mine. Um, and Freya has been with me for my whole life. Um, if it were not for her, I'm going to be completely honest, I probably would be dead somewhere. Um, she's helped me survive through abuse at home. She's helped me survive um, verbal abuse and helped me to completely rewrite my fate um, multiple times um, and get introduced to the Norns and meeting other very important people that I'm connected to. Um, it was interesting because another experience I've had with her um, when things were really bad at home, what she ended up doing was giving essentially my stepfather a position where he would travel um, almost 24-7 and never be home um, and only be home on the weekends. And that was my experience for many years because of her um, trying to protect me and the ones that I love. Um, other experiences I've had with Freya, um, she's helped me through a lot of um, relationships. She's even helped me to manifest um, a twin flame soulmate relationship. While that didn't go in the direction that I had hoped, what it did bring forward is a new direction and got me into the left hand path aspects of my practice where now I am a gray witch and where I embody um, the dual characteristics um, in regards to magic and not seeing light and darkness as good and evil, but seeing them as two sides of the same coin. It's because of her that I was able to choose myself over someone else um, over many lifetimes of codependency around love and martyrdom and self-sacrifice. Um, she taught me the value of myself and the value of my life and what I can contribute to the world. Um, and through my priesthood work with Freya, um, She's brought many people to me who are very connected with her, very connected with Odin and many of the other Asgardians um, that I've had to help um, one way or another. Either they end up coming to me for readings or services or some kind or some sort of indirect means or they know nothing of the Norse gods, but they're connected to those individuals and they don't know it yet. 
I've been kind of introduced to those experiences. Those are things that I've had to do in the past. Um, more recently, I've been focusing with Freya. Um, she's just been helping me to build myself up as a leader and as a public figure and being able to teach more. Um, and this has been my work to her. And as much as I insist, like, hey, give me more. I want to learn more. She's like, you're already doing the work. <laughs> um, other ways that I've um, committed to Freya in my workings with her is besides my daily prayers and my daily devotions, um, I do also have a contract with her essentially where through that oath, we are inter we are interconnected with one another at a soul level so um, sometimes when I'm channeling her energy and things like that she can see through my eyes whatever I'm experiencing she can see what I see and see it from my vantage point and know what I am feeling um, and vice versa I could do the same with her so I can see what she sees sometimes um, I don't get a lot of professorial stuff I think she tends to keep that away from me um, she does give me a few things here and there about visions of the future. Not that many, usually. Most of my visions involve current events. Um, and most of my experiences have been through the eclipses, where things have been really powerful and immense um, in terms of the visions that I receive. Um, but it was through her that I was able to heal all my um, past life um, karma, essentially, where... Um, it, it, it took about a whole year and, well, honestly, longer than a year, but the heavy duty amount of it was in a year where I've had past lives of um, sexual abuse and things like that. And that kind of coming through and having to heal that um, and stepping into my sexual empowerment. All of this has been the messages of Freya for me. So I, I take my work with her very seriously. Um, and it's through her that I've been so well protected, so well cared for. Um, I never honestly have to worry about money, never have to worry about my finances. I'm always taken care of when it comes to basic necessities. Um, and it's through her that I get to live a little bit more in luxury each day. Um, by continuing to do my soul's work, I feel like the more we're in alignment with our path, the less we have to struggle. Um, and one of the major lessons she's taught me, especially when things are slow and things are not manifesting in the direction that I hoped for, one of the messages she would give me is embrace reality, even if it burns. And I talk about this in a blog post that I have um, on my link tree on Instagram, um, a whole kind of detailed description of this. But basically, it means that the more we resist an experience that we're going through, that um, brings us difficulty, the more opposition we're going to face. By embracing the current circumstances, we are able to create change to those circumstances. So, like, it's kind of a bit of a paradox, but, but essentially by accepting and embracing what's going on, like being okay with it, um, and not like internally resisting it and creating strife within ourselves, the more easily we can move past the situation and manifest easier. This is something that she taught me. Um, she also taught me how to, she also taught me all about the runes. Um, although Odin had uh, some big parts in that as well. She taught me about the runes. Um, I ended up covering all the runes in a year where I meditated on each of like two or three runes each month for a whole year, um, writing down as detailed information on all of them. Um, I learned how to do Galder. I learned how to do runic bindings. Um, anything in regarding to divination and the magical use of runes, I learned from her. Um, like, even information normally you think um, wouldn't come for free just kind of came across my feeds every now and then whenever she wants to introduce me to something new. Um, this is how she has worked for me in my life. Um, and it was through her that I've been able to find a lot more, um, friendships that have been more meaningful, more connective on a deep soul level, um, that I've known from like past lives. Um, so it's through Freya that I've honestly gotten this far, even with my gifts and abilities. Um, back then, even during that, um, lunar eclipse at the beach, 
that ritual was for awakening my psychic gifts and abilities so it was over time from doing this and um the practical effort of opening up my chakras and things like that that i've gotten this far with my gifts and abilities because of her um those have been all of my notable experiences so far with freya i know there's so much more to experience with her um but i hope that you've enjoyed me talking about her and my experiences with her um the one i do want to talk a little bit about um my experiences with her in terms of her personality how she comes across she definitely has a very strong warrior-esque fiery side to her um that i think comes through from her aspect as freya as frig she comes through um with very much a motherly love i very much see her as the all mother um as she is um I most connect with her aspect as Goleveg, which is the aspect of her that's all about death and rebirth. Um, Goleveg has more of a fiery aspect to it, which is all about um, reweaving your fate um, and being able to rise from the ashes. That's very been that's very much been the experience I've had with Freya. Um, while I do connect more with her watery side, like Mardal for healing and stuff like that, her personality comes through. Um, very caring very compassionate um although i notice when she wants something she's very forceful about um obtaining it so if something like let's say there's someone who is resisting wanting to work with her even though she knows um kind of like essentially what's best for them and like they're going to end up working together regardless and there's a lot of resistance she gets frustrated about that sometimes and she'll come on very strong um, which may deter people sometimes. Um, but if you accept her intensity, I feel like, um, you only will ever experience her compassion, her love, and her protective nature. Um, I think of the story about how she made a contract with everything upon the earth and upon the heavens to protect her son, Balder, from being harmed, um, other than the mistletoe. I think that really describes how far she would go for the people that she loves. Um, and she's shown only that to me, um, honestly. And whenever I'm struggling and there's a particular lesson I have to learn, she will bring in a specialist, so some other kind of spirit that specializes in that area. It was through Freya she introduced me to Lilith um, and many other spirits as well. Um, her how I've worked with her in terms of her personality. She definitely does have a lot of humor. Um, uh, a lot of experiences I've had with her are really fun. Uh, when I think back to my experiences with her, um, she's always warned me about the goodness of other people as well as the badness of other people. So I remember one time she called out, um, one of my friends, she called her deplorable. Um, and to come from Freya it was a very intense word for her to use. Um, and the truth is at that time, I didn't know what the word deplorable meant. So I had to Google it up. Um, usually I end up learning a lot of vocabulary from Freya, a lot of words in the English that I do not use in my everyday vocabulary um, that she ends up teaching me somehow one way or another. Um, and I get like little tidbits, little phrases, little messages sometimes from her, um, just like encouraging me or, you know, telling me to like drop my guard when I'm, I've built up too many walls or maybe, um, I need to be a little bit more discerning. She's come through many times like that. Most of my experiences with her have been clairsentient and clairvoyant though. Um, clairaudient and claircognizant kind of go hand in hand at times with her um, but those have been the ways that I've experienced Freya um, so I hope that you like this video and how and my experiences with her let me know what your experiences have been with Freya um, and how you see her versus um, Frigg and if they're the same or they're not um, I know that's a big debate um, but it is how I experience it I've experimented it with multiple times and, you know, I'm just happy to have her by my side and that's all that I need. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.